Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's review we're going to be checking out Borderlands 3. And yeah, as usual this is a pretty late review. The game has been out for about a week now. But as all the other games, uh, I just really like to play the game properly before reviewing it. And obviously Borderlands is a looter shooter so end game is especially important in this situation. And it's just been so many games coming out. I mean, damn. I, could, I cannot keep up. But um, anyway, let's uh, head into Borderlands 3. So Borderlands 3 is, you know, just another Borderlands game, which are basically the kind of godfathers of the looter shooter genre. Now, for the most part, looter shooters are known for its endgame content, and the story or campaign is just like a little bit of a build-up towards the actual proper game. And that doesn't normally stand that well. But in Borderlands 3, or Borderlands in general, I'm sure if anybody's played any of the other Borderlands, they know exactly what I'm going to I'm going to say. And yeah, the story is actually pretty good, and I think we should talk about it just a little bit before actually talking a bit about the end game. So the story takes off with uh, the introduction of another new Fort Vault Hunters, and basically continues the story of Borderlands. Now, each Vault Hunter obviously will have its own unique abilities, own stats, as well as unique playstyle, just like pretty much any other Borderlands game. Now, at the moment, there are only four characters, even though I'm sure they will add some in later, as they normally do, but each one really does feel unique enough, especially like Endgame, where you can really focus on a specific build that you want, and they feel unique enough to maybe start another playthrough and choose somebody somebody different. So let's first talk about how good the actual story is in Borderlands. Now if you played any of the others you will know that the writing and the characters in the Borderlands games are absolutely superb. Like They have some really talented uh, voice actors in it. Also each mission seems like unique enough. It's not too long, like each mission is just about the right length. They're not too long and they're not too short. And pretty much most of the missions are the same length, so they're kind of predictable. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just time ways. There's, there's none of those typical missions where it's just like, oh my god, when is this going to end? Or, wow, this mission was too short. They're just like the perfect length, I would say. And all this actually goes for the side quests as well. The side quests are actually very, very uh, surprisingly unique. Like, sometimes you just come across a random side quest and it'll actually feel kind of like a main mission. Like, the characters in that side quest are really unique. They've got some really good voice acting, writing in them. And a lot of the side quests actually take you to places and allow you to do stuff that you don't actually normally get to do in the main missions, which is quite surprising and really nice. And all this is great because the game, or at least the story, does last in between like 25 to 30 hours. So it's always nice to to have some nice refreshing story missions and maybe go out and do a side quest or something like that. Plus the exploration in this game is absolutely amazing. There's tons and tons of collectibles that will unlock you new stuff. Maybe like unique enemies, like mini bosses just hidden around the world, which can drop you unique legendary weapons and stuff. It's always a great idea to... To go and explore in these games and along the way you'll do what you do in pretty much any looter shooter a lot of looting leveling up and well shooting i guess and pretty much all of it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to loot and get like your first legendary there's just so many weapons in this game like so many unique guns and items it's absolutely bizarre how many there are in this game like everyone's got their unique description a unique way of firing and it's, it, there's just so many, like so many with different references to real life stuff. It's, it's just really cool to just pick up a new legendary weapon and read through it just in case it's like a cool little Easter egg or something. I, I think they did an absolutely amazing job in this aspect. There's also actually a great number of different types of enemies in this game. So you never really get bored of fighting the same enemy. The bosses are really, really cool as well, though obviously bosses and pretty much enemies just end up as a farming method when you're end game but still they're, they're they're pretty good at least when you're doing the story there's also a nice map customization in this game from weapon skins to character skins and you know just there's not just like a few of them there is generally a lot of customization in this game the world like i said is really big nice amount of secrets easter eggs references in it pretty much like any other borderlands game I really can't find much wrong with this aspect of the game, except maybe a few bugs 
here and there. Nothing that will ruin the game completely. There are a few annoying bugs every now and then. At least it wasn't too bad on PS4, though I have heard that playing on PC is more of a nightmare at the moment, or at least the moment of release. I'm sure they're working to fix it as soon as possible. But yeah, all this footage is from PS4 and there's really not been any uh, issues with it. But anyway, like we said, it's the loot issue, so none of this will really matter, none of what you loot, nothing you learn. Nothing will really matter once you get to endgame. It, it feels pretty much like a different game, you want to forget most of what you've learnt and you're going to act completely different and you'll need a different mindset. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, I mean that kind of, it's just a more refreshing experience once you get to endgame. And there's a lot more to do. So pretty much like in any loot issue, endgame will consist of getting the best possible build for your character as you can. Farming a ton of legendaries, or at least the legendaries you're looking for. Taking on the hardish co-op trials, the circle of slaughters, which are kind of like these endless waves of enemies, seeing how far you can get. And in the future, they have confirmed that there will be raids. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Because at the moment, after about 20 hours in the end game alone, there doesn't feel like there's absolutely much more to do. I don't feel like my build can get much better. I have pretty much done all the trials, farmed all the good weapons and items that I could think of. So I really do hope that they start adding stuff like raids quite soon like as soon as possible now obviously i probably have played a lot more than most people and uh most people probably haven't even got to this point and the game is still very new most of the people that i did the trials with co-op wasn't even past level 40 level 50 being the max level I, I think i only found one other guy that was level 50 and pretty much all that i played so you know people probably haven't got to this state yet but i just hope they keep up the momentum i also really like the new social tab that there is in this game it's very very easy to like send weapons or items to your friend without having to join their session or anything like that it's also very very easy to play with them or invite them and it seems to be working fine at least for me i have heard a few people complain i believe on pc about invites and stuff not working but for me i didn't have any issue with it Another thing you do get in endgame is like an extra ranking system, like apart from the normal standard level 50 for your skill tree, you'll get a guardian rank which kind of has another skill tree that you can start leveling up. And as far as I'm concerned, like I'm level 100 and something and it doesn't really look like it's got a limit or like at least nobody's got to that limit yet. So it only really, that's like pretty much the only thing that would probably keep it, keep people playing it once they've done all the trials and stuff. So, like I said before, hopefully they do start adding in the raids and stuff as soon as possible. But you know, I'm not really trying to complain, like I said, the, new, the game is new, it's normal that there isn't anything uh, new added in yet, like the game's literally like a week old, and you know, I've played for 20 plus hours in Endgame and I think that's actually quite a decent amount and not, not to get bored. So everything's great at the moment as long as they do keep up the momentum by adding in things regularly. So for me it's a 9 out of 10, which is like 3 games in a row now. I believe that game gave a 9 out of 10. This, Control, and Astral Chain. There's just so many good games coming out these days, it's absolutely incredible. So yeah, I definitely recommend you should go and pick this up if you're even slightly interested in Loot Ashura. Or just even a good story, like you can... You could technically go through the story of this game without even caring about Endgame and still have a great time because the story is really well done, it's hilarious, the jokes are great, the, the writing, the characters, the voice acting, everything's absolutely amazing. So yeah guys, Borderlands 3 is now available on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. So hopefully this review is helpful, if it was please go like and subscribe and we'll see you next time guys. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. This will allow me to get more games and produce more videos. Thanks ever so much for the support. Take care guys.